Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Manjaro KDE, the newest release. I looked at the GNOME version about two weeks ago, and one of the reasons I wanted to cover this one was because when I do videos on Garuda or Kashi OS, I still have users that come out of the woodwork and say, Manjaro is the best, hands down. So today we're going to be looking at arguably the best Arch distribution that's available. Before we get started with today's video, I would like to thank everybody. We've hit 20,400 subscribers and we're on our way to 30,000. I am so happy and so proud of this channel and I thank you, the viewers, because without you, this channel would go nowhere. I also want to remind you that you can become a member to the channel for just 99 cents a month. The MVP, VIP, and Pro versions are gradually getting weeded out and hopefully all of those will be done by the end of the month. And all those perks will drop over to the 99 cent a month member. It's a great way to support the channel and a great way to support content you like. Now that we're back on Manjaro's website, I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. When you first come to their website, it's got a lot of different things on the front page. Uh, I still think it should have the OS front and center, but Manjaro is a business and they got to do what makes them money for their development. But at the same time, I still think Manjaro as the operating system should be front and center on the web page. If you disagree, please let me know in the comments below. Do any task in Manjaro. This basically gives you a lot of the different things that you get when you look at other Linux distributions. It's open source. You can use Office products, creativity, development, gaming, communication. And then Manjaro Linux software. You can run it in shells, in the cloud, Surfshark. Uh, SoftMaker Office, they've got to add for it there, even though the OS itself comes with only Office out of the box. And then let us handle your OS integration, partner with us. Of course, they're wanting to sell some hardware to help raise funds for their distribution. And then up top, you've got Project, Explore, Learn, or Supporters. Now, if you want to download it, you just click on the download button right here. It'll ask you if you want the x86-64 or the ARM version. Go ahead and click on that. And it gives you the official images right here, which is the Plasma, XFCE, and GNOME, which I covered two weeks ago. And then your community editions. The Budgie, Cinnamon, i3, Manjaro Docker, Mate, Sway Window Manager. So you've got a lot of different options there. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the website. You guys have seen it in the past. What we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and zip on over to the desktop and see if they've made improvements and see how much better it is. Now, if you download Manjaro, throw it on a USB, open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. And I do want to say, thank heavens, they have a different background. And I know a lot of you out there in my comments are going to go, backgrounds don't matter, I change them anyway. To me, it matters, and to other users out there, it does matter. And one of the first things I want to do is let's go over here and open settings. I want to get some information about the OS. So let's go down to about the system. And let's maximize it so it's easy for you all to see. We're using KDE Plasma version 5.26.4, QT version 5.15.7, and the kernel version has finally stepped up from 5.15 to 6.1.1-1 Manjaro. Now they have their own custom kernel, so this is an Arch distribution, not a spin. And I'm running it on a Ryzen 9 with 8 gigabytes of RAM issued to it. Now, this is your settings app over here. You can do a lot of different settings in here because this is Manjaro and it is KDE. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the settings app. I'm not going to go too in-depth with that. But what I would like to do is see if they do have the dark mode. We're on breath. So there's breath dark. And I want to go ahead and apply the desktop and window layout and apply. And let's switch that over. I just like the dark mode better. That's my personal opinion. So I'm going to close out of that. And it is KDE Plasma, so one of the first things I want to do is come down here, enter edit mode, and I want to go ahead and go to a floating panel. That's just my personal preference. And you've got date and time. You've got your hidden icons here. Manjaro settings manager, clipboard, night color control, lock key status, KDE connect, power management, internet, most recent USB, sound. Then you've got your Quake drop-down terminal. Let me go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it drops down up here. And you could run something like an HTOP. And then right there, the HTOP would pop up. 
Uh, right now, I've got about 8 gigs issued to this machine. We're using about 973 at rest with just the terminal open. So that's just a quick way to check your resources or do anything that you need to do in terminal. You've got a nice quick drop down right there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got your sound. Two available updates. You've got your two different desktops, desktop one and two. You can switch from them right there pretty easily. And then, of course, peek at the desktop. So let's go over here to the left. And let's go ahead and open up the file manager. And I do like the dark green they use on their icons in the dark theme. I really like that. I just think the look is overall better. Uh, you got your usual suspects over here. You got your home folders right here. This is a pretty powerful uh, file manager. It lets you get a lot of work done. And it still stays out of your way, which is pretty nice. You can make adjustments to it, of course. You can come over here and right click and change your icon sizes up here if you want. You can also hide things in here if you want to as well. And then just kind of customize this to how you want it. You can move folders around and pretty much adjust it however you want it. So Dolphin is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you have your regular terminal right here. You can do something like a NeoFetch and bring that info up. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And then, of course, let's make it a little bigger so it's easy for you to see. And it just says this is Manjaro Linux 6.1.1-1 Manjaro kernel. You've got 1173 packages that are controlled by Pac-Man. Bash is 5.1.16. We're in the Plasma Breeze theme and icons. And the GPU right now is just a virtual machine GPU. So that kind of gives you some more information there if you want it. So let's close out of that. Then you've got Firefox as your primary browser. And then add and remove software. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, let's go up here to the hamburger menu, click on it, and go to your preferences. If you go to third party, you can enable flat pack support. Now, I would recommend doing this just for the simple fact that you can get flat packs. They're separate from your system. You want them to check for updates on your flat packs. Enabling AUR support. If you're on Manjaro, I would suggest that you take AUR with a grain of salt for the simple fact that Manjaro holds packages back and updates on the kernel for what they call stability reasons. And sometimes when you download a package from the AUR, it's going to need the most recent packages and most recent kernel. So you might have some conflicts that come up there. That's one of the issues and complaints that I do get from people that have switched to Garuda or Endeavor. They left Manjaro because it really left them hanging out to dry on certain applications. So if you do give Manjaro a shot, please keep that in mind. So you can enable it. And then you can also check for updates on it as well. And then you can go over to general. And then one thing I want to recommend right here is use mirrors from. I would stick with worldwide. I've switched it to United States. I've switched it to Canada. But when I leave it on worldwide, it seems to refresh all of those mirrors. And then when I go to do my downloads, it automatically uses the closest, fastest mirror that's available. Now, that fastest mirror may be in the United Kingdom. It may be overseas. But at the same time, what you want is the fastest operating system and you want the fastest updates as possible. So just leave that on worldwide. Click on Refresh Mirrors. Could take anywhere from one to three minutes. You'll be updated and you'll be ready to go. And once that's updated and ready to go, you'll be able to come over here and do searches for things like GIMP or Krita. Whatever application you're trying to find will be really easy to find. Now, I will point out that until you get this installed, whether on real hardware or in virtual machine, this PayMac will not update the repositories until it's actually installed. So, Let's say you were doing a search for something like Krita, and we'll just hit enter. You're going to get an app image in the AUR, AUR, AUR. It's going to show all of this. Same thing with flat packs. Until it's actually installed, you won't see official repositories or your flat packs pop up. So keep that in mind if you're running this in a live environment. It's not an issue. It just needs to be installed for those repositories to refresh. Let's close out of that. And let's go ahead and open up your app menu. And then you can come over here, all applications. You've got your BTRFS Assistant, Dolphin, Emoji Selector, HTOP, Kate. So you're going to have a lot of the KDE applications. You've got only Office Desktop Editors out of the box. This is a real nice desktop editor suite. As a matter of fact, uh, within the next two weeks, I will be doing my first video in a 10-video series covering only Office. Now, 
What it doesn't do, I'm going to go ahead and point this out right now, is it doesn't respect the theme that your system is using. So you'll have to manually go in and do that. But it's rather simple. You just come over here to settings, go to interface theme, go to dark and apply. And there you have a dark theme. You can also scale it up. So that way, if you're hard of seeing like I am, you can apply that and make things a little bigger. And then, of course, you got document, spreadsheet, presentation, form template. And there's a lot of great information I'm going to share in the video series on OnlyOffice. So please keep your eyes open for that. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And we will come back over to all applications. We run OnlyOffice, uh, Info Center, QT, Scanlight, Spectacle for your screenshots, Time Shift for your backups. Time Shift makes it real easy. All you got to do is come over here and hit BTRFS if that's what you're using. Click Next. Pick the hard drive that you're wanting to make a snapshot of. It'll make a snapshot of it. And then that way, should you have any major failures, you can come back in there and, of course, refresh from that snapshot. Of course, they use the Calamari's installer. But because I am in a virtual machine, it's not going to give me the option to install because I don't have any partitions and there's not enough drive space. But it's real simple. Location, keyboard, partitions, users, summary, install, finish, restart, and you're good to go. Now, I do want to point out a few things here. I've had issues with Manjaro in the past. One, because of the AUR and packages, things not being update, packages being held back, and then applications on me just failing. Number two. Community issues, going in and trying to get help in the forums. Uh, I actually had some ideas about a year ago on some issues that Manjaro was having, and I gave them suggestions, and at that time, they really didn't want to hear from me. They have reached out since then and kind of tried to smooth things over, but I'm still hearing every now and then there's an issue with someone in the community that has been a long-time Manjaro user that is having issues with them. I'm leaning more towards the fact that I think Manjaro is starting to become more and more like the Ubuntu of Arch, which means their focus is no longer just strictly on the operating system. It's wanting to become a corporation and wanting to sell hardware and things like that. So I think Manjaro is a good operating system. You're going to have issues with the AUR. You might have some issues in the community. But if I were to recommend an Arch distribution, I would probably still lean towards a Garuda or an Endeavor, depending on where you are in your Arch journey. But I'm not bashing Manjaro. I'm just telling you my personal opinion. It's probably fourth or fifth on my list. If you would like to give Manjaro a shot, the link will be in the description below. Download it. Throw it on a USB. Put it in a virtual machine and take it for a spin. And if you do, please come back here. Drop in the comments what you think about it. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm. Which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month. Or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.